All right, so I didn't want to make this video, but here we are. It'll be an informative solution giving rant, if you will. So, we're now in week two of Apple TV Plus's new Friday Night Baseball, and there's a lot of good and a lot of bad to go around. Let's just start with the why behind it. Noah Garden, the chief revenue officer at MLB, says they've been looking for ways to increase reach for games on a national scale, and a combination of cord cutters and cord nevers have been putting them under pressure. So they think Apple, who can distribute the product to domestic and international audience, was huge. Lastly, the other big thing they thought was at least it's initially going to be free. Now, free will be for a limited time. Apple promised free games until June 24th of this year. A subscription requirement may come after, which MLB expects Apple to do. This whole deal is reported to be worth $85 million per year for seven years. So if you like it, great. If you don't, well, seven years. Now let's get into the good. I think the camera work and equipment Apple has been using is fantastic. You can really tell the difference. On top of that, the graphics Apple uses is very clean and minimalist to be expected of them. I really like the iOS sort of feel of it. It's very on brand. The probabilities that they put in the bottom right corners are cool, but they do feel kind of random. Sometimes they'll put chance percentage of getting on base for one player, and then they'll put a strikeout percentage for another. I think it'd be cool to have that section be a little bit more interactive with your remote or something in the future. All right, according to my notes, that is all the good that there is. Now let's get to the reason why you're here, the bad. First, my biggest pet peeve, you can't pause and you can't rewind. Yeah, exactly. Next and most glaring, you don't really have to look too hard on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, really anywhere to see what the fans are thinking. The broadcasts have been terrible. Now, I'm going to make this super clear. I don't think it has anything to do with individual performances. The issue seems to be across the board for each broadcast team. Some of the crew have defended their actions on Twitter by making it clear that they're doing a job that they were hired to do. And I believe that. It seems that they were hired specifically to act one way. Apple has always been a company that has a locked-in vision to what they do. No detail is too small, and there's no mistakes that they're making. Every little thing that you're seeing is by design. And the broadcast teams are no different. If you look at the reaction that everybody was giving across the board, it's been the same feedback. So what we do know is something uniform is going on. You would think that after the reaction of week one, maybe Apple and their broadcast teams would make a few tweaks, but the same issues happen again on week two. This is very par for the course with Apple, though. They get blowback on decisions they make on products all the time, and 99% of the time, their attitude is usually around the lines of, you'll get used to it. It's very unusual for them to bend to what the customer, or in this case, the viewer want. Here's a little bit of the reaction of what some people thought on it. Thought it was pretty interesting. So I was, I had plans on Friday night, so in, you can't DVR streaming games. So I did not see oh. the Apple TV disaster that everybody was talking about, but I mean, let me tell you something. I, it, without even seeing it, it ruined my Friday night because all I was getting was texts about it. You know, like people well, hated it. I mean, absolutely hated, absolutely it. hated it. So I mean, I, I can I could tell you what people were saying about it, but my own opinion on it doesn't mean much because I didn't sit there and watch it. I'm glad that I did not. Um, but you know, basically, what it kind of tells me though is that this is what Apple TV thinks of baseball. Like they don't think that the game stands on its own. They were talking about a lot of things that had nothing to do with the game, apparently. There's little stories and anecdotes and stuff like that. They're putting people in there that don't have any experience whatsoever, so they didn't treat it like it was a big game type of Friday night situation at all. And the graphics apparently were terrible. They put up, like, betting lines and different things like that to get people interested in the graphics, from what I heard. So... I mean, basically, Apple TV was like, hey, we're going to buy the baseball rights, but we don't think baseball as it is is interesting enough. So we're going to try to do it our way in a completely different way. And it bombed. Yeah. Well, anything new is going to be met with trepidation. And I think that's the case in this situation. Uh, it was, uh, dare I say, unlistenable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how else to say it. I mean, but then again, it's new and it's going to be improved. And sometimes when things happen, and they first start, you're you're like, oh my god, they gotta fix this. You know, certain things get worse. Booker Mobile got worse. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. I don't know if this can get any worse. But you know, it, it, if it can't get any worse, then hopefully there's going to be room for improvement. And so it's one game, one situation. Whatever bugs they had to deal with, they dealt with. And now they got to move on, and they just got to figure out how to make it better and improve it. If they think it's bad, they might not think right. it's bad. We so they, might think it's bad. They might not think it's well, bad. Well, well, they just ticked off essentially two fan bases. Yeah. That I now I gotta admit, it was really distracting watching the Mets and the Nats last week, and the Dodgers and Reds a few days ago. There's far too much talking going on, but also talking over the game. 
the best way I could try to describe it to someone who's never seen it is it feels like I muted the game while listening to just some random podcast. One of the most universal gripes I've seen is that they don't appear to be experts or know much about baseball. Like, it's just a crew of clueless people talking about three hours of, like, what, like, squirrels I think they were talking about when I was watching the Mets and Nats. Like, what pets they had when they were kids or Fogo to Chow or whatever. Yeah, again, I don't know if this was specifically instructed to them, like, to act this way or if they just decided to do this on their own because it just felt so uniformed across each broadcast that we were seeing for each game on Apple TV+. Plus. This past Friday, it was uh, Dodgers and Reds, and one mistake that boggles my mind is having Hunter Pence be on the broadcast team for that game on Jackie Robinson Day. Now, I don't have a problem with the guy. He seems pretty likable, but I mean, the guy's basically a giant lifer, and you don't have to go that deep into baseball lore to know the rivalry between the Dodgers and Giants. Dodgers fans probably want to listen to him as much as Mets fans would want to listen to Chase Utley talk for three hours. He just felt so out of place for a Dodgers and Reds game, especially on Jackie Robinson Day. I mean, it just goes to show how disconnected Apple is and how they really haven't been hiring the right people or giving them the appropriate direction. One thing that Apple can do to fix this is similar to what YouTube TV and their work with MLB has been. Now, I know a lot of people don't necessarily love YouTube's MLB broadcast, but I think the one thing they do well is having baseball content creators be a part of the crew for the games. The interactivity of it all feels pretty futuristic and, you know, like it's moving the game in the right direction. It just feels like a big old watch party with some of your favorite personalities. Alright, so I really think it just comes down to this. The broadcast crews that each fan base know and love are just as important to the teams that they watch. I cannot tell you because I've seriously lost count how many times the Mets are way out of it and I just tune in to listen to Gary, Keith, and Ron. If you're going to replace crews like that, even for one game, you have to do it with the right people. People the fan bases would be interested in hearing insights and stories from. A common note that I've seen on Twitter and on Reddit has been that really nobody knows who these Apple TV broadcasters are. Nobody really wants to listen to someone they don't know. Especially if they tune in to watch their favorite team and game and they aren't talking about either pretty much immediately and the jokes are falling flat like this you see we saw this a little bit earlier this huge knob on joey Votto's bat and if you think of like barry bonds he had a huge he was the first one to kind of do that but this is it's a little bit thicker Let's see if we can get there that counterbalance oh one of the thicker said, yeah. knobs i've ever seen that's that's <laughs> What do you think about that, Katie? Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> phrasing. Frank, <laughs> <I'm> phrasing. <laughs> eh. We get it, dick jokes are funny, but like, yeah, I'm not really sure what they were really trying to accomplish as a crew in general. Who's the audience that this is for? For the hardcore baseball fan? For someone who hasn't seen a baseball game before? For neither? It's not really clear? If there's anything to gather from this rant, I think it's this. Try to find people within the two teams playing that fans want to hear from if you aren't going to use their broadcasting teams. You've got the money to research and find and hire anybody on earth that you want. If you're trying to get to the younger demographic, which is the main market MLB is trying to hit, why not hire some local YouTubers or people running a team-specific podcast or just anyone with influence and a following around the teams playing? I think it's a no-brainer, but hey, Something's got to change because this isn't it. Anyways, thanks for watching. What do you think? I'll be answering some comments, so let me know. Consider liking and subscribing. It really helps a lot. Catch you guys later.